Man, do I hate living by a budget, but I've got a way to beat the budgeting blues that you're gonna love. Today I want to share with you something that I've begun to do recently that has changed the way that I think about money and I think it's going to make a big difference for you too. So have you ever heard of a personal financial statement? I hadn't heard of one really until I owned my first business and I wanted to get a line of credit for it. I had to fill out a PFS as they're called and uh, the bank took a look at that and determined whether they were going to give me the line or not. It was a sobering moment because with a personal financial statement what you do is you list all of your assets on one side and you list all of your liabilities on the other and you subtract the two and in the end hopefully you have a number that's in the black meaning your assets are greater than your liabilities. These would be things like your house, any property that you have, stocks and bonds, 401k, automobiles, you list their current value. And then you go and you list all the loans that you have, credit cards, mortgages, and auto loans, and all those things. And you subtract the liabilities from the assets. And in the end, you get a number, and it tells you what your net worth is. This is what you're worth financially as a human being. Now, don't get me wrong. Every human being is intrinsically invaluable. You can't put a number on a human being. People are beautiful and that they create value, just the way that we're designed. But from a financial perspective, we all have a number, a net worth. And that number can even be negative. Your debts can outweigh your assets. And so by doing this, it was sobering. I kind of looked at this thing in my early 30s and thought, oh gosh, I, what have I been doing all these years? I'm not, I'm not hardly worth anything. I was worth less than a year's salary when I when all was said and done, but it was a sobering moment for me. Well, fast forward to today, and now I'm focused on doing a monthly personal financial statement. There's a reason I'm doing that. You see, I'm not a budgeter. I don't know about you, but I hate budgets. I find them to be constricting. It's for me, a budget tells me what I can't do. And as an entrepreneur and a guy who's kind of a, a salesman at heart, I always like to think about ways to find a pathway forward, a way to do something versus a way not to. So when I hear a budget like you can only spend $50 a month on incidental and entertainment, in my mind it's like I can spend as much as I want. I just have to go close a new deal. I have to find some opportunity to create a little bit more uh, cash flow in my life or a tiny bit more income. So I'm not going to let some budget tell me that I can only spend 50 bucks. The fact of the matter is a budget's fantastic and can help you uh, navigate arduous decisions and day-by-day -day living and slowly put yourself in a position to be ahead. But for someone like me who tends to be more bigger picture and I don't like the details and I like, don't like to be constrained, a budget doesn't always do the trick. But the personal financial statement I have found has been phenomenal in changing the way that I think about my money and the way that I behave and spend my money. Here's why. When you do a personal financial statement, it tells you what your net worth is, assets, liabilities, and then you've got a number. And when you see that number, you start to realize that there are things that I do that affect that number. That piece of equipment, maybe a new motorcycle that I bought, it affects that number in a negative way because I either spent cash to get it or I took a loan to get it. So now I've got this asset but I've hit my cash or I've taken on more debt to do that. So you start to think about ways that your behavior impacts your net worth and you start to concretize. You start to make your financial situation and that number real. It's not just I'm hoping someday to have enough money to retire. I'm hoping to be in a position where I can afford a cottage. I'm hoping someday that I can kick back to part time and spend more time with my family or I'm hoping that I can retire early. These are all hopes and dreams, but these are not measurable things. We hope that they're gonna happen, but there's no way to concretize and there's no way to, to touch and feel these things. But as soon as you create a personal financial statement, you start to see the truth of the situation. You can do a gap analysis. If your net worth is only $45,000 in the end, and you're 52 years old, you realize you've got a huge gap to make up over the next 15 plus years if you want to even retire. Now, we often like to avoid bad news and these things can be kind of scary. It's like a cholesterol test. I'm gonna eat really well and then I'll do the cholesterol test to see what my number is. Well, look, we need to measure things if we want to change them. Whenever you're gonna go on a diet, you don't try to lose weight and then get on the scale. You get on the scale and you want to know how heavy you are. 
so that you can look and see, hey, I lost three pounds, I lost five pounds. Next thing you know, I'm down 35 pounds. I'm feeling the best that I've ever felt in my life. But you wouldn't have started that diet by not weighing yourself. And you wouldn't have been able to track your progress. You wouldn't have been as motivated. And you wouldn't have kept going if you weren't going to keep getting on that scale. And that's what the personal financial statement can do for you. It concretizes. It makes your net worth reality. Now, the fact is, whether you know the number or not, it's there. You have a net worth. And you're not doing yourself a favor if you don't figure out what it is. It's very easy to do. I'm not going to explain how to do a PFS. There's tons of stuff online you can look for. But the fact of the matter is take the time, do your personal financial statement, see what your net worth is, and then do it once a month. Because what will happen in between those two measurements is throughout the month, those weeks and days, you're going to be thinking about how your behaviors impact that number. You're not going to start spending as frivolously as you used to. You're not going to be reactionary with your money. You're not going to be impulsive with your money. You're not going to necessarily even need a budget per se because you're going to be motivated by that net worth number. And you're going to think about your spending habits in the right way, which is how do they impact my net worth? In fact, you can use this in a proactive way because you can start thinking about how do I acquire assets that generate more cash flow, more income for me, and increase my net worth. You start to think in ways that are creative that can help you grow beyond your nine to five job. You can have a job and own real estate, and that could greatly impact your net worth. You can be an entrepreneur and spend every nickel that you get and have a big fat goose egg at the end of the day, or even worse, a negative number. So I wanna highly encourage you, take the time. It's 20 minutes the first time out, and then after that, it's five minutes every month to update. Do your personal financial statement. Figure out what your net worth is. Identify the behaviors that are impacting it greatly. And you watch. You're not going to have to tighten down and just screw up your your self-control and your will. You're going to be motivated to make a change because now it's concrete. You know what that number is. And you're smart enough to connect the dots. You're going to know the things that you do that make that thing a positive and the things that you do that impact that number negatively. Look, I hope this helped you. I would love to have you guys on as subscribers. It's been great to take the channel from zero and see it grow little by little. So thank you to everybody that's subscribing. Take a minute, hit that like button if this was useful to you and even better, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. I talk about life and success and value creation and even a little bit of marketing and branding from time to time. I would love to have you along for the conversation, guys. Thanks so much. I love you all and I'll talk to you in the next video.